Hey everybody. Today I'm going to be reviewing a film that is a bit smaller and it came out earlier this year and I just never got around to seeing it until now. Because it is so small, I don't expect many of you to know what I'm talking about or to care, but you know, I have some opinions on it and I think it is a very interesting film and I am recommending it to you as one of the more intriguing films of 2015 that I've seen. The story of Heaven Knows What is one of the more interesting stories I've heard about in a long time when it comes to the backstory of how a film came to be. And in this case, the directors, uh, Joshua and Ben Sefti, they were originally doing research in New York for a film that they were planning to uh, direct. They came across this woman named Arielle Holmes. She's a homeless woman who is also, a, or was also a heroin addict. And they were so taken by her story and also just her inherent volatility and that melancholy look that she has in her eyes and in her expression, uh, that they hired her to write her own story so that they could cast her as the lead actress in a film that they would direct. Talk about a break. It is slightly fictionalized, but it is based on her life, and it is about a homeless girl named Harley, and she is deeply in love with this very abusive, manipulative, all-around asswipe of a man, and his name is Elia. And honestly, there's almost nothing here that is redeemable about him. He is just a horrible human being. But as she says in the film, she can't help that she's in love with him. And we've certainly all been there. You know, you are in love with somebody and it causes you to kind of spiral downwards and you know that it's a bad idea and she is addicted to that feeling of his love, that viscera and the potential relationship between the two of them. And this is also mirrored in her heroin abuse. A lot of people who have seen the film think that the film is quite similar to Requiem for a Dream. And when I saw the trailer, I honestly thought so too, because just of how jarring the effect of it is, but it's, it's quite deceiving in that way, because as you're watching it, honestly, I thought it was gonna be more like a Requiem for a Dream type film that's very visually arresting, or something like Enter the Void, which is a film that came out in the late 2000s that is more kind of the psychedelic DMT film. But in actuality, I don't think that the film is much like those films at all, other than the fact that they're both about drugs for the most part. I think that it's a more realistic, more gritty kind of film. And if anything, this reminds me more of like Italian neorealism films from the late 40s and even the early 50s, like Rome Open City or The Bicycle Thief. Because I think that a lot of the performers do come straight from the streets of New York. And the only really professional actor in the cast that's notable, at least, I would say, would be Caleb Jones. And that just adds to how organic it feels. It is very realistic, as I said, almost like a documentary. The way that it's shot has a very chaotic feel to it, where uh, there's a lot of extreme close-ups, and it almost reminds me of kind of the way Catherine Bigelow shoots things like The Hurt Locker. And despite the subject matter that it's dealing with, this film is not at all melodramatic. It is very, it feels very incidental and like you are living with these characters and, and living in their world. A lot of the people may think that the plot is maybe meandering or that nothing really happens, but I would argue that quite a bit is happening. It's just not on the surface. Most of it is internalized and it comes through the eyes and the body language of the main character, Harley. Arielle Holmes is the binding to this story. She is really what holds it together and makes it worth watching because she's just electrifying as a performer. Obviously, a lot of that comes from the fact that she really did live this life and she kind of was living this life even when they were filming it in a way. Um, so she's got this inherent sadness and she's very, very ferocious, angry, almost like a little girl, she reminds me of. And she's just very destructive. I always feel that the person that you are in love with mirrors the way that you feel about yourself. And the fact that she is so taken by this person who, in the very beginning of the film, basically dares her to kill herself for him, shows kind of that she doesn't really care about her own well-being very much at all. It's that need for a rush. It's that feeling that is teetering right between this amazing euphoria that you get from the high of heroin that, and it teeters to the point of absolute destruction. And it's that, that balancing act that is so addictive to humanity and especially to people that maybe come from very rough backgrounds and are looking for that escape or trying to reach that in a certain way. And I like how you see really what the life of a homeless person is like. You know, they steal um, envelopes and things like that from mailbags to try to find gift cards or anything that they can barter with, basically, with dealers in order to get that fix that they're craving so much, even though they really don't have the money to pay for it. And it's all done very visually, and you see how the character is feeling through the imagery, and that's how I think 
it really does work. For instance, uh, during the opening credits, there's this extended long shot that is just fantastic. A lot of the film feels very jittery um, and very immersive, but this is the one moment that it feels very controlled. And it shows her kind of bouncing around from place to place in a hospital where she's trying to recover, and she's getting in all these scuffles with all these different recovering patients, no matter who she goes to. She's bouncing back and forth, and that's a major metaphor for her lifestyle. And it shows how she alienates herself so much without using any words. And there's also a scene where she's on this motorcycle, which gives you a sense of what kind of person she is, to ignore the people that want to help her and be there for her, just so she can get that rush. For some reason, I really felt the rage in her in a very subtle moment, uh, one that really stuck out to me. It was a scene where uh, she's with a bunch of people, and as they're talking, she has, I think, a needle and thread, and she's just trying to stick that needle, sorry, the, the thread right through that tiny needle, just trying to get it through the hole. That's what he said. But she just can't do it, and it's that frustration of everything in her life falling apart. And it's just those little things that really reveal so much about how she's feeling without having to say it. And it's just that the idea that all this stuff is happening around her, yet she's refusing to see the big picture, that there are people actually out there who do want to support her. But I think that if I had any real criticism of the film, it would be that I don't think that she really had a true arc. But right when she really starts to encounter that final dilemma in her life that forces her to face her problems and not be dismissive for once in her life, I, I feel like that's where the film ended, and I wanted to see kind of the reverberating effects of that. And I never felt like I truly understood what was going on in her mind once she makes this big obstacle at the end. So there was really no nothing that kind of tied it together for me. But overall, I really, really love this movie. It was a movie that I was constantly thinking about after it was over, and it's just What's so great about it, again, is that there's nothing romanticized about it, and there's nothing superfluous. They could have easily done a film like this and had some movie star be this drug addict and make it very melodramatic, where they would use the role as some big comeback performance and Oscars and all that bullshit. But no, I, they chose to go the right route, and it's a very original in that sense, even though this kind of story has been done to death. I thought it was fantastic. So that is my review. Thank you all for listening. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, the link is below. And you can also like my Facebook page in the link below that. Catch you next time.